मूवीज इंस्पायर रियालिटी और रियालिटी इंस्पायर मूवीज लेट मी टेल यू द स्टोरी ऑफ मेहरान गढ़ फॉर दिस स्टोरी फॉर श्योर इज नो लेस देन ए मूवी राव जोधा द फाउंडर ऑफ किंगडम ऑफ जोधपुर वॉन्टेड टू एस्टैब्लिश हिमसेल्फ ऑफ द ईयर्स ऑफ ट्रेवलिंग इन द डेजर्ट एंड नीड टू बिल्ड अ फोर्ट इन अ सेफ प्लेस एज द ओल्ड मंडोर फोर्ट वॉज नो लॉन्गर कंसिडर्ड सिक्योर द आइडियल लोकेशन चोजन फॉर द फोर्ट was on a rocky hill in jodhpur which was then occupied by a hermit now this meant displacing the hermit this displacement made the hermit so angry that he cursed the fort as well as the royal family two curses at once curse number 1 he said that the region will always suffer the scarcity of water and curse number 2 the king will never live to see his grandson The hermit was as witched later but the curse stayed to find a solution to the first curse the king built a nice house and a temple for the hermit within the fort but the second curse of the king never living to see his grandson was more complex and so the second step he took was extreme to make the site proof propitious the king decided on a human sacrifice who would come forward not any one from the royal family of course but then a common man named raja ram megwal stepped up he came forward to volunteer on a condition that his family be given lots of lands and treated as part of royals after his death the agreement was done and the tragic tale of extreme sacrifice ended in raja ram being buried alive in the foundation when you visit the treasury room of this impressive fort you would be surprised to know that it stands on top of his dead body and uh, raja bag within the uh, near the fort rather land is where his descendants still live as a part of royalty the curse took some time to lift and after five generations history actually witnessed the curse being lifted when the present king maharaj gad singh finally witnessed the birth of his grandson when his prince uh, shivraj and princess gayatri delivered their baby boy india is full of such stories and fables in its history and art that lived through these historic times what would you say if i tell you that there's a place in india where 10000 years ago much before any civilization was recorded men painted in color people dancing hunting rearing animals that today is the unesco heritage site of bhimbetka in india or or that there is a place right in the center of india where as many as 22 temples built by hindu rulers celebrate explicit depiction depiction of love making and manuals for better sex that is another unesco site called khajuraho or that There's an entire city, larger and more populous than London then, built by one of the most legendary kings of India, Akbar, built and inhabited for 14 years to celebrate the birth of his first son, and then completely abandoned, never to return. And yet, yeah, that's another UNESCO heritage site of Sikandra. So, India is home to great art and history, and that if you have to get a sense of the world. travel to india as a must today in this podcast let's take a deep dive into indian art and history wow we all love stories so the what stimulated your interest in history was the school teachers teaching methodology very interesting on the contrary in school we had those thin ncert books that taught us history books with the battle of panipat was dealt with one paragraph or three lines of ajanta caves do you know who built the first set of caves in ajanta yes any name don't remember do you remember satwahanas maybe not do you remember reading about them maybe not that's how our scholarly times went so when i found a whole book from william dalrymple on just only delhi the book was named city of gems and found so much of wonderful content it was a wow moment Soon I had finished all the books he wrote. Then I moved on to Romila Thapar, Ramchandra Guha, 
and also on the texts of Abul Fazl, Al Biruni, and many more. Our country, being a collection of so many rich cultures and kingdoms, has a huge, and I mean, really huge and interesting history. I don't think we are taught well in schools to bring it alive. So there is another way now to absorb it, and that is to travel and to see it. True. So, what would you say about the art and history scene in India when it comes to traveling specifically? Right. So, as I said, India has a lot of places given its size, and it's natural then to give you glimpses of stunning art and history. Remember, India was a collection of many nation states, and hence art and history is really spread across the entire country. There are thirty-eight sites from India in UNESCO's heritage list. and we are the sixth largest on that list if you look at countries mm-hmm. there are sites like as i said the cave of bimbetka one of the oldest prehistoric paintings in the world mm-hmm. or buddhist art in ajanta elora and the many monasteries across himalayan india or if you look at palaces of splendor and glory then in rajasthan and madhya pradesh as well as the might of maratha conquest on the konkan coast of india or hindu temple art If you go down to the southern states of uh, Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu, you will find so many uh, uh, art movements from Cholas, Pandyas, Pallavas, Rashtrakutas, and Travancore and Vijayanagar. There are churches and frescoes in Goa, as well as Pondicherry. And then there are these looms of India across almost every large state, where shaping local Indian motifs into daily wear, be it a sari or paithani or bandhej or dori or kantha. Banaras, Tant, Kanjivaram, Chanderi. What I'm trying to tell you is that this country is full of art and history seen in every nook and corner, perhaps that one could explore. Can't agree more. Been to a lot of places here, and I can recollect what you said. So, in your opinion, which are the places of interest for travelers to explore? If I were to narrow down from what I was saying, I will. probably say that there are certain clusters in india which would be more beneficial for travelers first the cluster of delhi agra and rajasthan for a sense of continued medieval history from 6th century till about 20th century the second would be the state of maharashtra for the temple and cave art of the earliest 2nd to 6th century maybe and then a lot of military architecture and forts from 17 to 19th century so that's the second cluster the third i would say is down south karnataka kerala and tamil nadu the three states where temples and architecture actually span from 6th to 18th century and provide a lot of details about south india remember that south india for a long time was not well known and was more dravidian than what the country is where so it's it's something that one could pick up a lot from and lastly i would say the buddhist monasteries in ladakh are a cluster in themselves in terms of what it used to be in those days when buddhism was really spreading across in the subcontinent while these are clusters then there are also isolated but stunning examples of indian art for example the temples of khajuraho in mp or the sun temple in konark which is also a unesco world heritage site or the churches of old goa or the champaner pavagad archaeological sites in gujarat which are really stunning archaeological excavations so which are your favorites among these and why i am more impressed by scale and grandeur and uh, those places which have history associated with it so my favorites are the amer and jaigarh forts in jaipur uh, it's a 1000 year old structure now influenced by all architectural styles of north india for the past 600 years second i would say the ruins of hampi the capital of vijayanagar empire then and india's which is sixth city i think uh, in 16th century which was conquered and pillaged for 6 months and brought down to ruins and the ruins today are still very very impressive and lastly i would say number 3 would be the monasteries of ladakh especially the monasteries of hemis lamayur and fukthal for what they are built out of where they are and what they contain inside them now well how this is my list of favorites what is your one favorite if i may ask yeah so jaisalmer i would say it's really beautiful and quite photogenic one of my favorites i loved taking photographs there especially the 
गोल्डन फोर्ट द जैन टेम्पल्स इट्स अमेजिंग जैसलमेर श्योरली इज I think that's a very good choice. What would you suggest are the options for travelers if they have limited time at hand? Let me break this question into three parts. Let's say if you have least amount of time, just three days, then I would say you do what is called the Golden Triangle in India: Delhi, Agra, and Jaipur. Spend a day each, and you get a mini capsule of what India was. If you travel for a period of a week. let's say 7 days then i would say there are five options that you should look at let me call option 1 as palaces and royalty you start from delhi then you go down to agra then you go down to jaipur which is the part of a golden triangle but then you continue and extend towards jodhpur you spend one more day in udaipur and come back to delhi so that's your option 1 option 2 is what i'll call south indian heritage you start from bangalore as a base where you make day trips to go to mysore uh, to see their palaces go down to hampi to look at the ruins of the hampi uh, city go down to the temples of halabid then from bangalore you fly on to trivandrum look into the, tel- the temples and amazing amount of treasure in these temples before you move on from trivandrum to madurai go and see the the temples and architecture of pallavas and the famous minakshi temple and from there you move on to Tanjore where you see the temple of Bhadrachwa and uh, what was built and then you move on to Chennai where you take a look at uh, temples of Mahabalipuram and Kanchipuram so you start from Bangalore and you end in Chennai and that's your second option third option i would say is jewels of maharashtra you start from mumbai actually let me rewind in this you have you have two op- you have two uh, objectives one to look at the various forts and military or complexes of the maratha empire and learn from how they were and second we would also look at pre maratha and an early history of Mara- of maharashtra where buddhism and those paintings uh, and and rock carvings is what you will see so i would say option 3 you start from mumbai look at mumbai go to alibag fort then you go towards pune and look at the torna and the lohagad forts there from pune you move to ahmednagar Uh, look at the Ahmednagar Fort and the Chand Bibi Mahal, and then you move on towards Aurangabad, where you see those famous and world famous UNESCO sites of Ajanta and Ellora Caves. Before you again go back to Mumbai. Option number four, I'll call it Tibetan Buddhism. You start from Delhi, look at Buddhism and those wings in National Museum, and then you fly on to the capital of Ladakh called Leh. you see the monasteries of shay thikse hemis as well as the leh palace then you move on to this kit across the khardungla pass where you see the monastery and hunder then you come back to leh and go towards uh, shrinagar and on the way you see alchi lama yuru fukta ling shed and many more and then you hop back to delhi fifth option i will call it as pure royal rajasthan You start from Jaipur, go to Ajmer, go to Jodhpur, then go down to Udaipur, go to Chittor, go to Randhambore, and then go back to Jaipur. In this way, you will probably cover the most comprehensive history of uh, forts and palaces in India. Now, if you had more than seven days, maybe let's say you're coming here for a two-week vacation and you are an art and history buff, I would say you can combine any of these five options. to make a nice 14 day or a 12 day trip it will be really memorable for you so that's what i would say homa wow so much to do and see in india now sudeep let's get to our section called cut the clutter where we talk about when to go how to travel where to stay what to eat how to book do's and don'ts stuff like that just to help our listeners with some ready answers to make their travel planning easy right i'll i'll try my best let's first address when to go india's best seen from the months of october to march it is the onset of winter and then depending on where you are the months become pleasant uh the weather is bearable the temperature is lower and you know, it, it's pretty pleasant right except ladakh the northern most part of india where uh, the most reasonable time to go is between june to august any time before is too harsh winter any time later also is too harsh winter so that's about uh, when to go 
now let's talk about um, how to book because so many places that you have to go and see uh, there could be a question about how do you go see all these now most places in india have a very reasonable entry fee even if you are coming from outside of india some may have camera fee but still it's very reasonable and rarely do we need to book something online and in advance none of these places listed uh, that i just spoke about uh, earlier need advance booking or run the risk of running out of entry slots what you need to think about is to create a well paced itinerary that suits you and then book your stay and travel options for the itinerary so let me come to where to stay most of these places i have spoken about are very well uh, done in terms of availability of accommodation from budget friendly hostels backpacking hostels to luxury stays as well and plenty of them uh, exist in every place so there is plenty of availability for any kind of budget that you might have uh, as you perhaps uh, pick up places that you want to go and see uh, it then makes it easier or more sensible to go book places according to those places or maybe find a place in between two different places that you minimize your travel time so i leave it uh, very open here because i think stay is pretty easily done in india i'll come to how to move around now, the best option uh, in india is to fly into a base location for example if i was talking to you about the south india heritage tour you make bangalore as a base you fly into bangalore and from there you uh, take a private car or a self driven car and go out on day trips to mysore and come back then go do a take trip to hampi stay there come back go to alabed uh, check on there and stay and then come back so what i'm saying is the best thing is to fly into a base location then move around in a private car to disposal most of these would be 3 to 4 hours of driving from one base location to the another and come back or stay there and that's how perhaps you can you can maximize what you see in a base location before you fly into a different one uh one other way what could one could do is you fly into a base location and then pick up a car and then do road trips so that you go from point a to point b to point c and then either come back like in the case of a delhi jaipur agra delhi trip or you can perhaps start from one base location like bangalore and end it in chennai and fly back uh i would perhaps uh, not suggest too much of rail uh, because you know uh timings might be a bit inconvenient in terms of what you want to go see as well as i would not suggest public transports like bus for example for example it might be too crowded the best way to see would be a personal car at your disposal as you fly from but this this would depend on the time at hand somebody who yeah. has time can uh, pick you know uh, the the luxurious trains and experience india in a Absolutely. different way altogether yes so for example the fifth option that i said earlier about Royal Rajasthan if you have the time and the budget we have a fantastic uh, train which is called Palace on Wheels which takes you to the same places where you actually are on board a coach uh, or sorry on board a coach and then you spend 7 days in a very royal setting to experience that grandeur so yes you are right for south india you have golden chariot golden chariot as well so yes you are right that uh, if you have more time and options there are plenty to go around in india and do this So I would say uh, this is what would be in specific to art and history. The general do's and don'ts about India apply, which is that it's a very friendly place uh, to be with, uh, and uh, you should just uh, uh, respect and go with the Indian customs and rituals, and you'll find uh, people very helpful to you and accommodate uh, whatever you would want to do. So just perhaps sit back, relax, and immerse yourself. in what the country has to offer the basic precautions that people take in any other country the same would apply here as right. well the basic travel precautions remain the same across absolutely yeah, yeah. and you have to respect the basic culture that i mean that's yeah right. so that's what i would say as uh, basic questions i think it's a pretty easy thing to go uh, and do this in india so i would encourage uh, all of you who are listening in think about a next india trip and what places you want to pick up And in case you need help uh, in deciding or planning, give us a shout. We are here. Happy traveling! Happy traveling, guys.
So our art and history lovers, let's catch you up on another episode on international history destinations soon, very soon. Bye.